Ahoy me hearties! I've got another zero prep game to get your students hooked on. To play this, all you need is this here 100 chart. The game is very simple. I've hidden gold doubloons. One on every prime number and three on every square number. Starting from zero, players add two or three to the total, move the token there. If there's a treasure, they can dig it up. If not, they get nothing. The person with the most booty at the end wins the game. Teaching Opportunities To prepare first-time players or younger students, you might want to identify all the prime numbers as a class. If you are lucky enough to own a ThinkSquare kit, you can put the spiky board on top of the 100 chart and then it'll lock the things in place so they won't move anywhere as you work out where the prime numbers and square numbers are. So to do this, you can use a Radisthene sieve. And the idea of this is that every prime number has exactly two factors. If a number has more than two factors, you know it's not prime. So one is neither prime nor composite, and we can start with two. So two is a prime number, we'll put a yellow token on there. Then we're going to find all the multiples of two, and we're gonna cover them in black. So this means they're composite because Four will have factors of one, four, and if we cover it because of the two, two as well. So it means it's got more than two factors, so it won't be six also, eight, and on we go down. I'll speed this up so you can see. All right, so the next uncovered number, three, has exactly two factors, one and three. So we can cover that in a yellow tile as well. And now we've done that, we need to cover all the multiples of three. Now some of these might already be covered, which means these numbers here have more factors. So six has factors of two and three. And so we stack this up on top, and then we go through three, six, nine, 12, 15, and so on. So we'll do that as well. Right. So now we've done it for the number three, we could do it for the number four as well. This isn't going to show us whether it's prime. All the fours will be covered because two times two is four. So every second time you do a, up by two, you're gonna cover a four. If we covered all the fours, we'd get more on our stack. And at the end of it, we would see how many factors each of these numbers has, minus the two that we're disregarding at the start. So we'll skip the four and we'll move on to the five. And then we'll repeat this process until we've just got yellow tokens and tokens up here. So we've got prime numbers and not, and I won't bother stacking the factors this time. Now we move on to seven. And once you've got past halfway, you know the rest of these numbers are going to be prime as well. Hopefully I haven't missed any. Before you start the game, you might also give kids a chance to play around with finding square numbers. And so when you want them to play around with this idea, you might say, it's a number that you can arrange in a square formation. So one is a square number because that is square. Two, no matter how you arrange two blocks, you can't make a square. Three, well, you can get close, but not really. So four, you can make into a square. So four is a square number. And so you can ask, is eight a square number? So let's, let's have a look. Can we make eight into a square? Uh, not really, let's put it on the side. Maybe there, or it's, and eventually the kids can find a bit of a pattern. Oh, this this had three and three. The other one had two and two, and this one had one and one. And so they'll work out what the square numbers are. Once you've done that, you're ready to start. So let's get going. To scaffold for first time players and younger students, you might wanna put the treasure on the numbers to start with. So one is a square number, so it gets three pieces of treasure. Two is a prime, so it gets one. Three is a prime, so it gets one. Four is a square number, so it gets three. And you might define this with different colors, so you might have a color red representing three or something. Five is a prime. Seven's a prime. Nine's a square. Eleven's a prime. Thirteen's a prime. Sixteen is a square. And on and on. So. What you wanna do is remove the mental load of kids having to remember what a prime number is or what a square number is so they can focus on the strategy of the game. Now eventually, you want them to move towards 
you know, being fluent and being able to play this on a blank 100 chart, just like you'd get the back of your textbook or workbook and just be able to play on the back of that. So as I said, the token starts on the number zero, and then from there, players get to add either two or three to that number. So if I was going first and I was really thinking about my turn, let's say I'm the person on the left here, if I go two, that will allow my opponent to get the four. So I'm gonna to choose to go to the three. And even if that wasn't a square number, I might choose that because getting one to give your opponent three is not really a great play. So now I've gotten one for the left side. Put those over here. The right side can't get the square number, so they're gonna jump and get the five, I think. They don't want that person to be set up to get the nine, so I think that helps doing that. So they'll take the five. Here, they don't want their opponent to get the nine, so if they go a three again, that might be useful. However, there is also a square number here, which if you work backwards towards, you can work out special ways of, if I get to this certain square, I will guarantee to get this. And so same with this one. And so maybe, you know, you strategically do get that or don't get that because there's a bigger reward waiting later on. So anyway, let's just imagine they skipped there so the next person can't get the square number. This person, they wanna get something. They might get the 11, so one, two, three. They take that, and I think that was the person on the right. Now this person, they can look here and they kind of go, oh, if I take a two, they'll go a three. If I take, I can't take a one. So no matter what, their opponent is going to get this here. So actually what they wanna do is take this because regardless of where they go, the next person's going to get that. So they'll take the 13, then the next person will take the 16 and on and on the game goes. But to make the game a bit more interesting or to extend it, what you can do is actually place tokens on other things. So we can have a five doubloon reward if you land on a multiple of 17. So that makes the game a lot more interesting because now there's another thing to factor into your decision making. So here 17, 34, 51, all those would have five on it. Now the reward has to be based on how rare the thing is. So because there's only five instances of this, between zero and 100, that's why it's a five doubloon reward. Hope you enjoyed the game. If you're looking for more like it, I've sailed the seven seas and I've never found anything more engaging than the Maths Mate Year 7 and 8 textbooks. You can solve algebra labyrinths. You can race cars to learn about rates of change, travel the world like me to learn timetables, or deliver pizza to learn about decimals and time. Mathmate.net slash textbooks. Otherwise, you can check out my free online games at games.thinksquare.com.au. Ha ha! Shiver me timbers!